All right, let's get started. So, uh, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Brian from uh, Osteo Strong in Torrance, and tonight we have a very special guest, uh, Dr. Ernest Kim, who is also a local here in Torrance, and actually just just down the road on uh, Delamo Boulevard, literally about uh, a mile away, or even not half a mile away. It's really really close. And I first was introduced to Dr. Kim through a good friend of mine, uh, uh, Fran and Alice, who also come see you. Um, and they, they really uh, highly recommended you for just the chiropractic care, but also ART. Um, and I know you're gonna talk a little bit more about that, uh, but yeah, they, they come to you because they, they also have pain issues. Um, and Fran himself, he's, he does a lot of athletics. Uh, you probably know he's, he's pretty extreme. Ironman. Being a triathlete, yeah, full, full Ironman. So he's working out almost every single day. So his body, is, there's a lot of wear and tear and just uh, needs a lot of attention. Um, but yeah, then I uh, talked to uh, Dr. Kim and invited him over and he came over to the facility and uh, uh, saw what we were doing uh, with our clients with the bone health and overall. And yeah, I just wanted to try and collaborate together uh, to see how we can work together with the various clients that we have, because uh, we each have our specialties. Um, but yeah, uh, really uh, thankful. So Dr. Kim. Yeah, hey, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it and really excited to kind of talk about um, the body and fascia and, and at the end we'll have some time for some questions and you know we can talk about anything and, and everything maybe current events and coronavirus and, and things like that hmm. uh, so yeah I have some slides should I go ahead and, and share the screen yeah. okay yeah. Let, me, let me try this here All right, are you able to see that? Can, can you see that, Brian? Yes, I can see it. Yeah, okay, here we go. All right. Um, hi, everybody, my name is Ernest, Ernest Kim. I'm a chiropractor and I'm also an acupuncturist. Give you a, a brief intro of my background. Um, my father is also an acupuncturist and so I kind of grew up around this holistic lifestyle, but I always wanted to be, you know, bigger and better and, and different from my dad. So I never thought I'd be, you know, in the, the healing field. But um, when I was a kid, I was always very skinny, bony skinny. And when I became, you know, a teenager in high school, I, I wanted to change that look. And so I started working out and I wish I knew about Osteo Strong then, or if it was around then, I probably would have bulked up faster and, and quicker, but I, I became very interested in, in lifting weights and, and nutrition. Um, but as a kid, I, I wasn't doing it properly. And, you know, I was just focused on upper body and I had bad posture. And so I had a lot of low back pain and, and issues growing up. And so, you know, one day in, in college, I, I woke up and I couldn't get out of bed, you know, and, and I had to kind of crawl to the campus ER and, um, the, the physician there, she just prescribed me, you know, muscle relaxers and sent me down to the PT. And, and luckily the PT was able to, you know, give me some massage and stretch me out. And I was actually able to walk out of there. So, you know, that kind of really opened my eyes because I was originally a pre-med major and I kind of shifted my direction and decided, you know what, I want to study psychology because at that time I was also very interested in, you know, like Eastern form of psychology and kind of esoteric medicine and, and healing. And so, I, you know, my second year of college, I, I took a year off to do massage school, actually. So I went to a, a thousand hour program and started doing massage and going back to school. So I, I finished college with um, my bachelor's degree in psychology and I really enjoyed doing massage. And that's the time that I was actually introduced to ART, but I wasn't certified in it. I had just experienced it. And so after, after school, I, I thought, well, you know, I, I want to do some more studying and, and be able to help people out more. So I decided to go, to go back to school and there was a dual degree program where you could study chiropractic and acupuncture at the same time, you know, like during the day, eight to five, you're doing chiropractic program and then six to nine, you do acupuncture. So I thought, hey, wow, I can, you know, do both at the same time and really utilize my you know, maybe my psychology background as well as my hands-on massage background. So I thought it'd be a 
good way to combine everything. So that's how I um, ended up in school like that. And I always knew I wanted to incorporate soft tissue work. So that's why, that's how I got into ART. Um, one of my mentors highly recommended that I get certified. And it's, you know, you, there's many different courses and every year you have to certify into more classes. So that's how I got into ART. I'm also a transformational uh, life coach. So I kind of incorporate that as well into my practice. Um, and so, yeah, that's a little background about myself. My, our office back on point wellness is in Torrance. Like Brian said, we're super close by. We're on Delamo and Anza. So that's just a little background. I want to go over what um, I want to talk about today, which is the basics on fascia. I want to talk a little bit about the classification of fascia, where it is in the body, and how that connects to our bone health and bone tissue. You know, there's a classification normally that bone tissue isn't really considered fascia, but you know, there's some studies coming out saying, hey, why, why isn't it? And I kind of want to briefly go over that. And I want to touch upon osteoporosis and how mild fascia release is, uh, can really be beneficial as a uh, adjunct treatment for that. And then I also want to talk about acupuncture and stem cells. These are kind of new studies too that acupuncture can help stimulate stem cell growth. Um, so yeah, I, I want to go over a few research studies around those things. And then lastly, um, kind of tie in how this can be beneficial while you do your workouts at OsteoStrong. So um, feel free if you have any questions at any point to just let me know and I'll, and I'll do my best to answer them. And then like I said, at the end, you know, we can talk about a, a lot of different things if, you know, any, anything that comes up with current events and I've done a, um, I'm really interested in, in kind of what's happening with uh, the, the situation in the, in the world today. So I'd love to, to talk more about that if anyone's interested. So uh, let's get started here. Fascia, what is fascia? Um, put simply, it's the component of connective tissue that provides support and protection for almost every structure in the body. Um, every cell in the body has some type of connection which is um, fascia. It's, it's separated from other cells through fascia and it's not just limited to muscles. Collagen fibers are the main structural component. They're like these microscopic cables um, that are kind of bound together in a mesh and, and that's what creates the strength and resilience. I like to compare it to uh, chicken. You know, if you've ever cut open chicken, that white filmy substance, that's the fascia. You know, and, we, and we have that around all of our muscles and to a microscopic level, we have fascia in between our cells as well. So here's a kind of a, a, a microscopic look here. This is a tendon. Um, and you, if you see the red arrow, uh, that's the collagen fibril and how that becomes bundled up into this mesh form and forms this tendon here. Um, here's a picture of a bone and a tendon and a muscle and that white filmy substance I was talking about, how that wraps around the muscles here. I think we have a picture coming up. There it is right there. So when you cut open chicken, that filmy substance, that's the fascia. And um, that's what, you know, it wraps around your muscles like a stocking. And that's kind of what ART really focuses on, on working with, breaking up. And we'll, we'll kind of get into more of that. So, so when, real quick about that. what was that? I wanted to ask you about. I was listening to a talk earlier today about collagen and how important that is for your bones. And he was talking about, you know, all the skin on, on, on ribs and different meat cuts, which I don't eat meat. And then he was talking about, you know, the chicken skin, the fascia that you're describing. And then he said that little white thing around a hard-boiled egg, you know how you peel that little white? Oh, yeah. Egg? Would that be considered fascia of a, of a chicken egg? <laughs> because he said that's high in collagen, too. I tr I boiled some, and I tried to get the skin off, but I, could, I couldn't get it off. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not too sure about that, actually. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, you're talking about that thin film? Yeah. Not, not the shell part, right? But I know no. that. Yeah. I'm no. not sure. Brian, do you know? 
I, know, I have no idea, but that's that sounds pretty reasonable. He said that you got, you got the protein. You write it down. Barrier. Yeah, he said you should eat all this that the fat tissue and everything, and the and the meat that's loaded in collagen. And I I don't eat meat, and I can't even imagine eating a fat like that. But but I need to get collagen, but I don't know if I'm ready to go that route. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay, yeah. So moving on here, when you when when we're injured, right? This um, this fascial framework gets ruptured, and there's an inflammatory response, right? Because we need to repair the damage. And what happens is the body starts laying down new collagen in that area, but by doing so, it kind of creates inel inel inelasticity. So like, if you know your muscle fibers are like this they start to get like this, you know, through repetitive injury or, or, or trauma. And so you lose your range of motion because the body wants to protect, right? It wants to tell you to, Hey, stop doing that motion. It's causing problems. And so we have to actually manually break that up. And that restriction can be caused by, you know, overuse trauma, even inactivity. Um, and that results in pain, tension, you know, decreased blood flow and, and inflammation. So if you see right here, um, on the left here, that's pre-injury. That's kind of like normal, healthy tissue, what it looks like. And in the middle is where it gets injured, strained, right? And then when it heals, you see all that white stuff. That's that scar tissue. That's that's what kind of forms these hard things. And that's what we break up using ART. There's not one definition of the fascial system. Actually, it's still being you know studied and it's... Um, becoming more popular this idea of fascia and how that affects the body um and you know uh, another way to think of it it's it's an anatomical continuum that connects every part of the body and a recent study showed that the thoracolumbar fascia which is in the back um it actually connects to the the ab to your abdomen to the abdominal muscles and so it's like we look at the thoracolumbar fascia as just being in the back but you know if you look at it from a macro perspective it's actually connects to the front. And really, I mean, if you really want to talk about it microscopically, fascia, there's, there's, the body doesn't separate itself as low back and neck. It's just one big continuum of fascia and muscles. So if you look at it here, that's thoracolumbar fascia. That's tied on a lot of people, athletes, um, people who work out a lot. And if you look here from that back arrow, that's the, that's, that's your, your lumbar spine and it comes all wraps around all the way to the front. To your abdominal wall right there. Okay, bone tissue. Um, this is kind of interesting because currently bone tissue is not considered part of the fascial system. But, um, you know, there's some studies saying, hey, why isn't it? You know, is it just semantics? Because fascia is any tissue that contains features capable of responding to mechanical stimuli, right? The fascial continuum is capable of supporting, dividing, connecting all these different parts of the body from the epidermis to the bone. So the continuum is constantly transmitting and receiving mechanometabolic information that can influence the shape and function of the entire body. So currently only the periosteum, that outer layer of the bone, it, it, which is a connective tissue, um, that's considered part of the fascial system. And it's two layers. The outer layer is rich in vascular nerve vessels. That's why when you break a bone, it heals faster than if you damage your ligaments. Um, and this outer layer determines the mechanical stability of the periosteum. And then the second deepest layer is where the osteoblasts and the fibroblasts and all the good stuff, that's what you do at OsteoStrong. You're building all those osteoblasts up in your body um, and also stem cells, which is you know good for regeneration, right? So here's a little picture. That outer layer here is that periosteum on the left. And then on the right, you see the endosteum. When you go deeper inside, that's where you see the osteocytes and osteoblasts and osteogenic cells. Moving on. If I'm yeah, going too fast, kind of makes, let me know. It yeah. kind of makes sense, like you say, that uh, you've got the fascia on the bone itself. Because if you've got the muscle and then the tendon attaching to a bone, basically the fascia is sort of that, 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 that glue. And I think structurally, if you have fascia all the way wrapped on the outer surface of the bone, then it's just, there's just more to, to connect to them. Right. right? So it's not, it's not tendon on bone. It's, it is tendon on bone, but then it's wrapped 
exactly. Exactly. All together. Yeah. Oh, so that's what this this article is talking about. You know, it's we're 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 looking at it as if it's separate, but it's just like different yeah. parts, different fascia can look differently um, in the body. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Okay. Mona. Oh. I, I was just talking to myself. I said, unless you think of it like a chicken, because a chicken is that that thin layer on the outside and then it's not connected to their bone. So that's different. Like that. <laughs> but if you thought of your body like a chicken body, you, you, know, you wouldn't think of fascia as part of the bone, whatever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, right? All right, let's go. So ART, I, I, I'll just give kind of a, a brief description. It's very similar to like mild fascia release. The only difference is that it's, you know, it's, it's a systemized protocol of specific muscles and nerves in the body. Um, it's similar to deep tissue massage, but you know, there's no lotions and it's just very specific. So we are really focusing on finding um, the area of dysfunction. And then from there, restoring function to the fascia by breaking up the scar tissue. That, that slide I showed you of what happens when, you know, you start to form that scar tissue. So ART goes in and, and breaks all that up. And uh, what are the benefits of receiving ART prior to an adjustment? So, you know, a lot of chiropractors, they will only do adjustments, but I find that it's really important to address the soft tissue um, before you do any kind of adjusting so that the body and the muscles are loosened up and the joint is ready to move. You don't have to be, you know, you could be very gentle in moving the joint when the surrounding musculature is, is released. Yeah, that actually, it makes a lot of sense because you could be adjusting the spine and the hips and all that, but if it's, if the muscle and your tendons are structurally in the wrong place, you're just going to like pull it back. Exactly. Right? You're just going to like undo what you just did. Yeah. It's, it's so common. Yeah. And, and, you know, especially if that's what pulled the joint out in the first place, Yeah. then you're only treating part of the issue. So what does it feel like? Uh, kind of like a deep tissue massage, but more emphasis is focused on active movement. So for instance, you know, if I press on your trap right here, we are moving you from a, you know, if your supraspinatus muscle here, your rotator cuff, we're moving you from a um, contracted position to a lengthened position. So there's a lot of active movement. So it's not like you just sit there and, and you're, you know, getting some kind of massage, but there's a lot of movement happening and we're going from shortened to lengthened position. And it's nice because you get to control the movement and, you know, if it's too much, then you can kind of slow it down. Of course, there's other areas where, you know, it's not controlled by you and, and, it, and it's not that simple, but um, for the most part, it's, it's a very interactive kind of treatment where we're, you know, you, you're doing, you're doing some work, you know, and um, it can be kind of intense at times, but my, my philosophy is that it should be, um, not too much where you can't relax. So it, it could be a little painful, challenging, but you should still be able to relax into it. So, you know, who needs to get ART? No one's too young. Everyone asks me, you know, like, you know, can I bring my, my, my son, my, my toddler or, or my grandpa? Yes, and no one's too young or, or too old um, to receive ART. It's, it's, it can be beneficial to anyone in, in dis-ease because, um, uh, and, and it says here, even post-surgery, because it, post surgery can produce uh, 2,000 pounds per square inch. So I'm not sure exactly what that means, but it, you know, it's it's just it's scientific words for saying that you can have a lot of pressure in the body even after surgery for correcting something because of all the scar tissue buildup. Mm -hmm. So we see a lot of post surgery patients as well. Wouldn't that work? Wouldn't that work for your bones as well? I mean, because pressure on your bones hitting them or or running or doing anything where you're vibrating your bones if, if somebody was really pushing on your bones would that help build more bones well what was your question can you clarify what you were saying i'm talking about your your well, your active release technique but oh could that help with with bone yeah because you're Sort of pushing on the bones and putting pressure on the bone, right? Um, pro probably not. I, I think, you know, for bone tissue to 
get stimulated. I think Brian knows a little bit more about this of what's needed, right? With, um, I think you told me there's a certain force that's needed to really create yeah. bone cells. Yeah. yeah, so there's definitely, I mean, based on uh, Wolf's law, the principle, um, what the researchers have found out, it's, it's basically like 4.2 times your body weight. So you're talking hundreds and hundreds of pounds. I think that, so that's what we do at OsteoStrong is actually wow. put impact force on the bones themselves. But I think what, what Mana is, is, is uh, sort of alluding to is potentially, if you are doing ART, yes, you're putting pressures on the, the muscles and the tendons, will that help the bone itself? Um, I don't think it's gonna trigger osteoblast for it to grow, but it will help with the overall sort of wellness and maybe like the release of tensions. Because you may, you may have tension in your body that's pulling your whole body askew. So that, that, can, that potentially can help. Definitely, and it can also help with healing. So like if you were healing, if your bone was healing and we're working around that muscle, then it can help stimulate and, and support that, you know, but by itself, probably not. But, uh, you know, I, I talk a little bit more about that in, in the next slides here. Did, did you have another question? I was just thinking about the type of massage where they like pounds like that. You know, because they say even body and brain, is, if you pound hard, you vibrate on the bones, that that will build bone. I, I think that doesn't make sense, though, if you're, if you're taking your... If you oh, you're talking about... Um, How old print? You're talking about supplement where you're like, kind of like, kind of hitting the, the body, the bone area? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really strong and hit really hard. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Like yeah, I'm not too sure. Yeah, it's like a hypervolt, a hypervolt right? The hypervolt oh, massage. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's not that won't trigger osteoblast. I mean, oh, it'll, okay. it'll, it'll, yeah, yeah. yeah, it'll be comfortable <laughs> for a massage, but it won't, right. won't trigger. Yeah, the hypervolt is it's very superficial, yeah. Yeah. And it's not, yeah, you probably wouldn't want to do that. So here, <laughs> let me show you a little video here of uh, kind of what ART looks like. It's an old video, so I'm sorry, but. I'll let you just watch this. So we're working on the traps here. The levator scapula as well. Oh, the rhomboid here, yeah. The rhomboid and the levator scapula. So we're going from shorten to lengthen right there. Shorten to lengthen. And what, what was the issue this person had? He's a high school athlete and he was having some soreness in his neck and back. I think he was, I think he was a runner. And do you find Dr. Kim, um, patients, if in this case, are they, are, are patients typically like lopsided? Like they- It's very common very common like pain is always like on one side of the body yeah very common i try to do both though i so if, if they complain of you know left-sided issue I'll, I'll spend more time on the left side but i always do a little bit on the right side just because i if you see that poster in the back kind of that's anatomy trains where it shows the connection of the fascia and, and sometimes chest pain can be coming from you know your back you know it's it's just so i try to kind of cover uh, both sides usually so here we're doing a little bit of the neck I think this is towards the end of the video here. This is more of a mobilization. Yep. A little bit of cupping. <laughs> okay. cool. All right, so here's a couple studies. So this is a study of mouth fascia release on, uh, they did as part of physical therapy for two elderly patients with osteoporosis and kyphoscoliosis. And they both had good results. Patient A remarked that she could see herself in the mirror at home for up to two days following treatment. Patient D, uh, B described not having to lean on her elbows at the sink when she did the dishes for up to two days following treatment. Both described feeling more energetic than with exercises alone with greater ease and comfort and carrying out functional activities. And, and these results were measured using uh, post-test functional assessment and they received myofascial release and exercise. 
to indicate improvement in balance and function, as well as reduction of pain. Here's another one here. Oh, as opposed to just exercise alone. So this was kind of showing how it works together um, synergistically here. This is chiropractic manipulative therapy on an 83 year old man. He had a lot of issues, cancer, compression fractures and osteoporosis, as well as leukemia. And um, in this case, they received positive outcomes through chiropractic um, therapy. So I don't, I don't know if there's malfascia release on this one, but definitely the chiropractic kind of helped here with the history of compression fractures and osteoporosis. All right, kind of switching gears, I want to talk a little bit about acupuncture. Um, just a brief description, what is acupuncture? It's an ancient form of healing. Our body has meridians or pathways that energy circulates in, that energy circulates in. And you can think of these pathways as like freeways. And when there's a traffic jam um, in these freeways, it can cause pain, illness, or disorders in the body. And so when you needle specific, specific points in the body, it signals the brain to disperse the traffic jam and help restore the body's uh, natural flow of energy. What does it feel like? The needles are super thin, they're hair thin. Most people feel no pain or just a slight pinch as the needles are inserted. Um, you know, patients who've had medical injections are fearful of acupuncture, but it's nowhere near it because it's so much thinner. And uh, my style personally is very shallow. I don't really do deep needling as it, as it is. Um, so that's just a little info about acupuncture. Um, interesting fact here, osteoporosis has been recognized by traditional Chinese medicine since it's mentioned in text um, in the Huang Di Ni Jing text in the upper right in 111 CE. So, you know, they knew about it a long time ago. It's referred to as bone wilting or bone desiccation disease. And in, in acupuncture, we attribute it to deficiency of the kidneys since the kidneys are related to marrow production. So we see it as a kidney deficiency um, bone issues, okay? Here's another study how acupuncture can help improve bone mineral density um, in patients with primary osteoporosis. This is based on the visual analog scale and, and their pain score. Also, uh, both types of acupuncture were equally effective in producing sustained cl clinically relevant pain relief in patients with osteoporosis. I believe they used electroacupuncture. That's the both types. Um, and here are some studies on stem cell uh, stimulation. So they're finding that when you do electroacupuncture at specific immune points, acupuncture points, to stimulate mesenchymal stem cells and macrophage release into the peripheral blood. Um, electroacupuncture may serve as a way to facilitate tissue repair, tissue repair following injury by supplying high levels of circulating MSC into the circulation and could be used to treat acute or chronic conditions. This was in 2017, so kind of you know new studies. Another one here. They're on the bottom right, that's electroacupuncture. That's what it looks like. So basically you needle the patient and then you connect the kind of electro, um, the little pincher looking things. And then you stimulate, you send electric stimulation to, them, to the needles. So what it does is it gives the needles a little extra charge into the points. And um, according to the studies, it can help produce these stem cells into the blood. 2016 here. All right, so you know, combining ART and acupuncture can be very powerful. You know, 92% of trigger points anatomically corresponded with acupuncture points. So, Brian, you're telling me about um, Rolfing, right? It was developed by Ida Rolf, and she mapped out the trigger points in the body, and 92% corresponded with acupuncture points. And she had no background of acupuncture. Had, you know, she didn't know anything about that. And when you kind of put them together, it was like, hey. These are acupuncture points. So you can stimulate acupuncture points through, you know, muscle work as well. That's why shiatsu, um, you're not doing any acupuncture, but you can still stimulate those points. And so myofascial release can open up the meridians to allow for maximum flow of bioenergy or chi. You know, we're, we're, we're looking at chi now as bioenergy or bioelectricity. 
um, kind of the similar principles too when you do the adjustment, that innate potential. Um, we're, we're kind of just speaking the different language, but, but same thing. So yeah, you know, I, I think it would be really beneficial, you know, combining these two, like the other studies showing that when you combine exercise with, you know, myofascial <clears throat> release or acupuncture, I think it's a great way to improve your balance, you know, flexibility, posture, and your strength. The, the bottom picture is um, stretch therapy. And so that's, uh, John, our stretch therapist there, he's stretching out. Um, he's, he, he stabilizes with the strap on the table to, um, to get a deeper stretch. And then the picture above is the vibrational plate. Um, I was able to try that at OsteoStrong. I'm a, I'm a big fan of vibrational plates because it stimulates all the muscle cells in the body. And I think it's great. You know, it's a great, um, it's great for athletes, it's great for elderly, it's great for anybody that wants to keep your muscles strong. And I think it's good for recovery, but I personally, I'd love to have it at my home, you know, on, on my, my, my rest days, I could use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, um, I've, always, I've always thought of, uh, especially when it comes to the, the elderly, they're not as typically as flexible. Um, they typically have less uh, muscle density, uh, typically a little bit weaker. So if we are strengthening their skeletal system, they have a strong body, and as their muscles get stronger, it's almost like, okay, you're, you're building a house, but if the house is not flexible to, like, like say, bend, or because they do this with skyscrapers, right? Skyscrapers actually bend in oh, yeah. high winds, right? Yeah. Otherwise, it'll, it'll snap. Right. So it's the same, I, I kind of... Uh, say the body's the same way it's like I, I can make the the bone strong and the muscle strong but if you're not like flexible and being able to do this then what's the point of having strong bones and right. strong muscles if you can't even just move right and there are clients that have like severe let's say kyphosis or they can't even like move their legs around or their arms around because of just stiffness and I, and I think it's to do with a lot of that that fascia yeah, and those are usually the same people that they work out and then they get, they hurt themselves or they're in pain. And so they get discouraged, you know, from working out because of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what's your, uh, I know there's a lot of research now with uh, stretching. Now they're saying don't stretch before exercise and do stretching after exercise. Because I heard that if you stretch afterwards, your muscles are actually warm and therefore your fascia is warm. And when you stretch afterwards, you're actually being able to make it more pliable, the fascia versus having a, uh, versus in the beginning when it's cold and you hurt yourself. Yeah, so they're calling that dynamic versus static. So they're yeah. saying, you know, before your workouts, you do dynamic stretching. So you wanna do more like active motion um, relative to the exercise you're doing. You know, so like if you if you're a golfer, then you do like kind of your golf rotations, you're just kind of warming up your body, kind of getting movement. Um, and then after your exercise, then you do the deep static holding, breathing type of stretches, you know, and I always tell patients that, hey, look, you know, after you, everyone, everyone doesn't like to stretch after their workouts, right? You're sweaty and, you know, you just want to go home. Um, but that's the best time too, because you've just worked out your muscles, your muscles are warm, but you've also just worked it out. So they're tight, you know, and that's the best time to stretch it, release it and relax it. Um, and so, yeah, these, you, you, we're seeing athletes um, really changing the way they, they understand their body. And that's why we're seeing faster and stronger athletes, I think, with, with new knowledge and new data with, with um, working out and, and, and all of this. And most athletes um, have a regimen. Uh, most professional sports has ART in their department now, and they have all these equipments too. So, you know, the benefit of having a, a well-rounded regimen of, you know, these exercises is reduce fall risk, reduce fracture risk, better quality of bone, which leads to better quality of life. And, your, you know, the bonus benefits include fat loss, better posture, muscle gain, improved balance, more flexible muscles and joints. You know, we just talked about that right now, which can lead to increased confidence. Questions? 
at ART, actually, you can help phone your phone business. Is that what you're saying? I mean, that was that along with access, access and delivery for that company wouldn't do anything, but by working the meridians and access at this point, you can somehow make, or, or you more saying that it's more for flexibility and, and balance. I'm sorry, Mona. I, I, you, you, it's kind of hard to 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 hear you. What what was your question? Figure out what's wrong with my speaker. Nobody can. I was just so, so. You're basically saying that the ART and the acupuncture would go along with helping to make the bones stronger, or or are you just talking about inflexibility and balance? Yeah, you know, it's not really. Um, like, like we said earlier, you know, it's not that it's going to have a direct effect like on the osteoblast of, of bo building bone, but it's a great conjunction to what you're already doing. You know, for instance, if you're at OsteoStrong and you're building, um, you're strengthening your bone, you know, you're strengthening your bone quality, um, maybe you have some tight muscles around, you know, that, that get tight. And so you, you do this as a combination, um, then it can really help overall. Acupuncture, on the other hand, can help stimulate stem cells, you know, so it and bone mineral density. So I would say acupuncture could have a, a more direct effect on bone health than um, ART. But ART can also help with keeping your connective tissue, which surrounds your bones, in good health, which can also help your overall health. Do you see what I'm saying? I just don't want to give a direct answer that, yes, ART can help with bone health because there's really no science to to back that up, you know what I mean, directly. But there's science that's showing that it's great in conjunction with exercise and all these other therapies that it can help. It can help with recovery, but there, it's not really saying it's gonna help generate uh, more bone tissue. So that's sort of a form of massage on all over your back and hips, right? Yeah, or yeah. Is in, the, in the case of osteoporosis, if, if you had someone taking the osteo strong and then you would use the acupuncture and the ART. Yeah, yeah, we have some patients that that happens, you know, and um, depending on where they're at in their recovery process, um, we can treat them simultaneously with, with the ART and the acupuncture. Yeah, definitely. But is that more for flexibility and? and Balance, or is it actually to make stronger bones? Are you, are you asking about the, the ART specifically? Or, well, the combination. Yeah, so, you know, let's say somebody has osteoporosis, right? And let's say they're, you know, they're, they're in the phase of rebuilding their bone health through supplementation, through osteostron, through exercise. And they also might have some aches and pains by doing that. So then they come and get treatment. The acupuncture will help in conjunction with all of those therapies for creating bone mineral density. Um, and the ART will also help with wherever, you know, usually with, they may have some pain and the ART is gonna help with the pain, um, you know, in that part of the body. And when you, you know, it's just really hard to say that, yes, that it's helping you know, huh? Depends on the person, probably. Yeah. Depends on the person, and there's there's just not much on bone mineral density directly. It's just overall they recovered faster by incorporating all of this. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so let, let me add to that. So so yeah. So I guess the analogy is yeah. You come to Austria Strong. You're building your bones. You're getting stronger. But if let's say laterally you can't move sideways because your back is stiff. I can't help you release a stiff back. I can, I can make your back stronger, but if it gets to a point where then you have like a really tight back and your tendons are, are super tight, then your quality of life isn't very good, right? So what's, then what's the point of having like, okay, really strong bones and strong muscle, but you can't move, right? Because everything's all stiff. So. ART will help then release that, right? So you can have that, that mobility because you need mobility for good balance, right? Yeah. The first thing is don't fall. Uh, and in order to not fall, you better have 
good motor skills and, and good balance uh, and be able to move your muscles. But if the muscles are tight and stiff, then yeah, there's potentially a chance of falling down. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'll add this too, Mona, is that, um, you know, let's say you're doing ART on the back or working on a connective tissue, that's gonna increase blood, you know, increase circulation to the bones too, to that area. So if there was some, you know, weakness in that area, it could it could indirectly affect it in a in a positive way. I could say that definitely. With that, because I'm I do balance it. I do everything. I mean, I work at the gym three days a week, and I do body and brain, Tai Chi, and all this stuff. Oh, well, good. <laughs> I do. I mean, I'm an addict, and balance and and flexibility and all that is really important. But I found one today where. Because I have, I, I don't know, I used to blame it on the fact that I played guitar and I'd always sit like this when I was doing it, but it's probably because I have osteoporosis and because I'm older and everything else. But I have like, I don't know if it's a dowager or something, they were talking about that fat that gets to the neck and I don't have fat anywhere, but I do have a hump on my back, but that kind of massaging and ART, ART that might help work that out. I mean, these exercises, even, I've only been doing them for two days and I can really, it makes me think to keep my shoulders back at least. And, and actually that first day I got sore from it because I did a whole bunch of them. But that would, would that help with that? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely, it can help with all of that. I have another really weird thing trigeminal neuralgia. Have you ever heard of that? Oh, yeah. Is that is that in your face? On the left side. I, I hit my head on my glass, the corner of my glass desk about a year before last. And about, and I got this huge bump. And then about two, two or three days later, I started having these awful electric shocks in the side of my, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't my, it was like they call it the suicide disease. It was like unbelievable. I couldn't brush my teeth. I couldn't eat. I couldn't. I couldn't do anything. It was such pain. And they put me on this drug. I thought, God, I'm not going to be able to work out or anything. They put me on this. I think it was three milligrams. And and I and then that next day I felt great. Like I thought, oh good, this is like it's all gone. And then the next night I went to bed and I got up in the morning and I couldn't even walk a straight line. I was like, no. Completely. So I started researching on that, and they said, especially somebody small, and the first time they shouldn't start them off on a heavy dose like that. So we went way down, and I, I took it for a while, and I actually did go to an acupuncture after they did an MRI, and the blood vessel was touching the trigeminal nerve, and and then it went away totally, and that was like around. April or May or something of last year, not this past year, but the year before. And then when the lockdown came around and you know, you couldn't go to doctors or do anything, and I thought, God, I hope that never comes back again. And it did start to come back. And I I started watching on YouTube where you do all this, you know, stretching in the face and doing all this stuff. And I and I still have it, like if I Put a towel next to my face or touch here, I feel the electric shock. I mean, it really incorporates in your thinking about how your body, the body electric that you have. But but I still have it, but it's not, yeah, it's not suicidal. It's not that big of a deal. But but she was doing pins like here, in the arm, I think in the big toe, something like that. So have you ever treated? done acupuncture for something like that? Um, you know, it's not it's not very common. I, I, I did see it once before. Mm -hmm. um, actually, when I was in school, we saw that in our, in our clinic. Yeah. But um, yeah, you know, if, if you have more questions about that, we can talk after and um, I can talk to you more about it. Yeah, but, but yeah, that's because um, I used to go to a chiropractor. He was like my mentor. I mean, I, he was oh, wow. the only doctor. I hate doctors other than him and I, when I had any health question of any kind I'd always turn to him but he died three years ago and I haven't, been, 
I haven't been to a chiropractor then. He got me through the pulling cartilage in my knee. They wanted to, to operate and everything. He got me. And so when I would knock it out, get it out again, I could always go back to him. But now I, I just do all kinds of knee exercises to make sure I keep it strong so it doesn't go out again. But it's, you know, you sound like you'd be a great chiropractor. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I definitely believe in chiropractic. I always think of it as a, a, a track. And if you, you know, when you have chiropractic help, you're the train going correctly on the track. You know, when it gets off, the chiropractor brings it back on track. So I totally believe in chiropractic, a good chiropractor. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, you need a good one. Go, go, go see Dr. Kim then. Because <laughs> I would never, I, after he was gone, I would be too afraid to go to any chiropractor. It's a very personal thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. In the body. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that's why ART is so nice because we don't always adjust anybody. We don't. We don't. We don't always adjust everybody. Uh, some people are kind of hesitant, and that's fine because we can still make you know, a huge change working on. You know, your connected. Hey, Dr. Dr. Wong, any uh, questions? Yes. Thank you for uh, your presentation. I really enjoyed it. Is is the ART and chiropractic combined in some programs now? That's a great. A combination really yeah hey dr Wong, thanks for joining us um it's not taught in schools it's but oh, they see. have like elective classes and and they have you know like pre presentations so so it's kind of the, the intro is given in schools but you have to kind of then take it as a separate course oh i see I it really makes course. sense because you know we have of course people that does uh rolfing in our clinic and often the chiropractors will send them to us to get to work on the connective tissue to loosen it up yeah. so that the adjustment can hold a lot longer. So I right. think the combination is great. Yeah, yeah. I, I really you know, think it's, it's necessary and needed to do both. Um, I think especially right. now, you know, I, I just think there's so much stress, more stress in the world than you know, before in ancient times too. So I just think almost, I don't know anyone that has no tension, you know, muscular <laughs> tension in their body. Do you have like a set number of series? Because for example, in Rolfing, they usually talk about the basic 10 or the 12 series and they work on the whole body. Do you yes. mostly work on acute uh, areas or do you work on the whole structure with a certain number of sessions? So typically, so first of all, ART is also divided similarly. They, we have um, you know upper body, lower body, nerve, spine courses separated. But mm -hmm. um, on average, typically, we say between six to eight visits, usually patients, you know, see major change. And if not, after then, then we kind of reevaluate or refer out. So I would say on, on average, you know, yeah, I, I see a lot of good results, sometimes even in four, you know, and, and sometimes even in, in one. What are your length of the session usually? Um, for me, on average, about 20 to 30 minutes. For each session so it's i i'm limited to how many Cement? you know huh yeah, you do the art and the adjustment in the same session yeah so typically art would be about 20 minutes um okay 20 to 25 minutes sometimes and then the adjustment will be the last five to ten minutes but like i said to to mona earlier sometimes there's i have patients i don't do any adjusting we only do art okay very good yeah yeah, maybe Dr. Wong can send you some patients over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get it, get it, get it all done there. One, one stop shop. Yeah, because yeah, well, it totally makes yeah. sense. Because um, yeah, traditional. When I look at traditional chiropractors, they they only focus on the skeletal the bones, system. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, just yes. the bone part, and you may be like misaligned, uh, so they fix that. But if your muscles are, is causing the misalignment, then you need to work on the muscle. Yes. Right? Again, it's the, the root cause. Because um, otherwise, you're just temporarily fixing. Because there's so many people, with, let's say, with, with kyphosis or stiff neck. Well, the stiff neck, yeah, part of it is, is the bone, but it's probably because their muscles are just so, their tracks are so stiff. Exactly. I, I think Europe is a little bit more advanced. Um, there's like whole forums and conventions on fascia now. And I think as that becomes more mainstream, I think we're gonna we're gonna see more of that, you know, and hopefully it'll be integrated into the school systems. 
because um, you know, for you, it's kind of intuitive, right? But you're, you, you're also very active. So you know what that's like in your own body. Yeah. Um, and, and that's how I think of it too. I, I just can't understand how, like, how can you address the body without addressing this? Um, but I, I just think it's, it's lack of awareness. And as more knowledge and data comes out, um, studies, I think it, it'll become mainstream eventually, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Ida Rolf when she was alive. You know, she was wow. pretty amazing. She was <laughs> in her 80s at that time. And she actually, she was partially blind. But I tell you, you just can touch the body and knows exactly where to move it and all that. You know, she studied, uh, what do you call it? You know, just a lot of the basic things. So she was an amazing lady, yeah. Was a privilege. Yeah. Wow. Wow, you got to meet her. Nice. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I think sometimes with uh, schooling, when they, I, I love, I love the, the, the schooling you went to, uh, Dr. Ken, because it, you had this sort of broad, holistic perspective. Um, sometimes a lot of the, the medical schools, then they, they put you down to like the, the special, specializing, right? So then you're only specializing in this one thing. And as we know, it's like, okay, you can fix this one thing, but then it's like, it's still the whole system. You have to look at that whole system. Because if you fix that one thing, again, the root cause may be something else that's causing this issue. Right, yeah. And, that's you why know, we talk, talk about the body, mind, and spirit, right? Yeah. Balance yeah. has to be there. That's the most important thing. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, yeah, so, go ahead, Mona. I was just gonna ask him about the bones. You know, I haven't seen him in three three years now, and I so I haven't had an adjustment. But now that I know that I have osteoporosis, and I think it was on the left side of my neck too, so would it be safe to get an adjustment if your bones that bad? How bad? <laughs> yeah, you know, it depends. I'd, I'd have to take a look at your whole history, and, and it's kind of case by case. But um, there's patients that they can get adjusted, you know, and and but if if we feel like you know, it's not safe to you, we'll just do the ART. It's amazing though, because I mean, I've had, I've been doing chiropractic since I was, I don't know, beginning of time, since I was in my 20s or even. And, and so it's hard to imagine that my bones aren't strong enough to be adjusted, but these doctors tell you if you have osteoporosis, that your bones can break just by talking too much or something. <laughs> you know, like you're gonna fall apart any minute if you don't take their drugs. Sure. Yeah, I think it just depends on who your your specialist is, and um, yeah. You get into nutrition too. You haven't gone that far, have you? <laughs> um, yeah, we talk about nutrition. Also, we you know, on the acupuncture side, there's a lot of herbs, so herbal medicine yeah. is, is a is a big part of our practice here as well. Yeah, I used to always take homeopathic remedies. He was into oh, that, great. so I'm totally into that kind of stuff. No, that's more, awesome. More sort of than drugs. I won't take drugs unless, unless I, it's a matter of life and death. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a time and place for everything. You know, yeah. our, our philosophy is um, even though we are rooted in alternative medicine, I still believe that there's time and place for medicine as well and surgery. Um, obviously, that's not the first choice, but um, I, th I think it depends. It all, it's all case by case. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think? What do you think of this corona, the COVID virus? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. the one with mercury and all these toxins and all that they're gonna maybe force you to take. Ooh. I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's it's something that I've I've been on top of um, ever since it, it, it's um, you know since last year and. It's, I've learned a lot just researching, you know, almost daily on, on all of this. And of course I see patients, you know, who've had it and um, who've recovered from it and, and things like that. So yeah, this is something that's always on my mind and something that I'm always looking into. So do you have like a, what's your, you have a specific question on, on something? Oh, I just get, I'm starting to get emails where they say, we're gonna tell you all the things that, that the doctors won't tell you and, and how, how terrible this vaccination is and how it's loaded with all these toxins and stuff and then they say you better watch this because it's going to disappear quick if the if the if the doctor you know if the tech or big tech or whoever's getting rid of all these things you know 
and it disappeared before I could even watch it. It was gone. I opened it up, and it wouldn't it wouldn't open up. But I, but I you know I, I know any any shots loaded with things that you don't really necessarily want to put in your body. Even antibiotics are are hard on your system. So I'm just wondering if you had any thoughts on what this would be. I think. For me, the important, um, the important thing to understand about the vaccination is how it works. And when you understand how it works, then you can kind of determine if it's right for you or not. Um, for me personally, the mRNA vaccine, what is a little concerning to me is that it's new. It hasn't been used like, you know, in the past, it's usually an inactivated vaccine, right? Inactivated virus. So like if it's the flu virus um, or if it's a flu shot, it's just like an inactivated form of the flu. You get it and your body recognizes it, thinks it's the flu, creates antibodies. Um, and then when you are exposed to that specific strain of the flu, then your body recognizes it and it, hey, we've seen this before, here's the antibodies, right? But with this new mRNA vaccine, um, your body is kind of almost like a code, like a program makes the, the spike protein of the virus um, and then it creates the antibodies. So that's kind of different from having an inactivated form. It's almost like your body is being programmed to make it. Um, and, and that's the part that kind of is a little concerning to me because we, it's the first time we don't, we don't know how it's going to work out. Right. Um, so I, I think, you know, you understand how it works and then you can kind of, you know, weigh the, the benefits or the risks for you and if you want to take it or not. So I, I would just say it's, it's case by case, you know, there's, there's, I, I, for the most part, probably, you know, most people will be fine if they take it, you know, but yeah, there are side effects for some people. And um, I've been reading about that as well. Yeah. Well, the question is whether, whether we'll be able to have the option to take it or not take it. They're talking about yeah. whether everybody to take it. Yeah. That's a, that's a tough one, right? Um, um, yeah. We, America is changing when you're talking about the world scene. You know, it's not liberty and justice for all right now. It's sort of, you know, the powers that be are starting to take over. At any rate, so you, okay. you so it's a, it's on it's on the hour. Just wanted to wrap wrap things up. Um, so Dr. Kim, thank you so much. Um, I'll actually, I wanna connect you and uh, Dr. Wong together. I'll, I'll give you his uh, oh, yeah. information. I think uh, it'd be good for you guys to chat and collaborate there. Um, and then I'll definitely drop by and say hi to you guys uh, over at your center. Um, but yeah, uh, really, really appreciate all the knowledge. I'm never gonna look at chicken skin again. So you've ruined it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Now I know what now I know what that is. <laughs> but uh, thank you very much, and uh, um, thank you. Yeah, hey, thanks for having me, Brian. I really appreciate it. Um, now, is it an email address or a phone? Oh yeah, 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 Mona. So um, you can, you know, you can follow us. Um, we're on Instagram and Facebook. Back on, at Back on Point Wellness. Um, email is info at backonpointwellness.com. And you can always just search us back on Point Wellness online and you'll be able to connect us, connect with us that way. And our website is backonpointwellness.com. So, and um, like Brian said, we're, we're down the street from Osseo Strong. We're on Delamo and Anza. So yeah, thanks so much, Brian. It was, it was really good. I had a good time. Um, thanks for allowing me to, uh, to share this today. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, have a good night. Bye, Mona. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Dr. Long. I didn't get to see you, but. <laughs>